Wait a minute, I hear something. Dr. Boober! What's happening, everybody? It's time for another episode of Dr. Movie, your third favorite podcast. <laughs> I don't know, maybe fourth. I don't know. As long as I'm in your top 50, that's that's cool with me. Um, back with another fun-filled episode, and we're going to talk about the 2010 Frozen. No, not the Disney version with uh, Let It Go and all those songs. There was a Frozen that came out before that in 2010, directed by Adam Green. And, um, boy, this one really packs a punch. Uh, as you know, Adam Green uh, just kind of came out of nowhere and started doing, you know, the Hatchet movies. Um, Digging Up Tomorrow, Chillerama, I mean, in involved in a lot of different things. But I think this is the one that really got my attention uh, as him directing. And, um, this is a thriller horror, like I said, from 2010. And let's do a synopsis here. As a winter storm approaches, three people become stranded on a chairlift high above the ground after a ski resort closes for the night. Um, yeah, that's, that pretty much nails it. Uh, super low budget, but well executed um this movie is about as intense as it gets it was for me anyways um it's not a straight up horror movie like they kind of label it here um but it's it's just a fight for survival of a more realistic terms you know uh as far as our cast you've got three main characters sean ashmore uh, plays Joe, Emma Bell is Parker, and uh, Kevin Zeggers is Dan Walker. Kevin Zeggers was, uh, I believe, in the Dawn of the Dead, the remake of Dawn of the Dead. Is that correct? Oh yeah, and the and a couple of the Air Bud movies, <laughs> right? Uh, the other two have been in a few things. We do have Kane Hodder in here, uh, driving a snowplow. So. Uh, which, you know, we know later on, uh, Adam Green uses Kane Hodder in, in uh, the, the Hatchet movies. So we're, we're seeing a, a growth here. And uh, a growth, <laughs> not like, you know, not a bodily growth, but a growth of, of a relationship in movies. Um, yeah, man, this one is uh, just just a survival flick, right? You got three friends. It's, it's, it's a... Uh, you got... Dan and his girlfriend Parker and their and Dan's best friend Joe and they're going on a on a ski trip and um they pay this guy off to let them ride the 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 sky lift and um uh, you know not a big deal at first but they go through the day lots of good character development and I think that's something that we're we're missing now is because you've only got the three characters they spend a lot of time getting you invested in these characters and it's done so well um there's a you know like i said they 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 pay this guy off to go up on the ski lift and do a run and then you know when it's time to go home they're shutting everything down because there's a storm coming so they're trying to get everybody out of there and they convince the guy to let them uh get back on so they can you know get out of there as quickly as possible and the sky is pretty much empty at this point right there's there's only these three that are riding on it and the guy that that got paid off to let him go is uh called into the office because of some time that he wanted to take off in the next weekend or so and his his co-worker comes up and says oh man you you gotta work so he kind of throws a fit so this he hands it off to this other guy and you know, with all the confusion and everything, we forget about the three people, and they shut everything down. They're about midway, <laughs> and they're suspended about, I don't know, 
30 feet from the ground. I mean, they're, they're way up there, more like 30 yards. <laughs> they're really high up there. And so they're, they're trapped. And, of course, from there on, you get, you know, survival mode, right? They're trying to figure out how they're going to live through this because it's getting colder. They're starting to get a little frostbite. They can't go to the bathroom. They're hungry. All these things start kicking in. And it, it seems like this would be boring because there's a ton of dialogue, right? Because it's just these three and they're trapped up here and they're trying to find a solution. They, they you know, late at night, they see Kane Hodder come through in a, in a, in a, a snow plow and he's right underneath them and they're throwing stuff trying to get his attention, but it's during the storm. So he thinks he sees something and he kind of stops and looks around and he's not sure. And eventually he just goes on his way. And from there we get, you know, decisions made good or bad i mean you know I, i'm I'm not going to give too much away because i really feel like this is a movie you need to check out so i'm trying to give you as little as possible but they are stranded up here and and we get again the dialogue building between these characters um you just end up liking them uh, you know uh joe one of the one of the you know, the best friend he kind of hits on a girl he don't really hit on her he's trying to help her she's having problems with her ski gear or whatever so he's trying to help her out and she's there with an ex-boyfriend and you know he's aggressive and tries to push joe down all this stuff and literally he was not trying to do anything you know right there on the spot he was generally trying to help her and uh but he bumps into her later on before they get back on the lift to go home and uh he ends up getting her phone number and she explains the situation was sorry and was embarrassed about the whole thing and all that stuff so you know you get to see some 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 good come out of that but you know you kind of got the third wheel thing kind of going on and there's a little that that kind of goes back and forth and uh when they get stranded up here a lot of that really comes to a head and you know you get a lot of blame that starts getting passed back and forth and them trying to find solutions of how to get down and it just gets insane and uh claustrophobic is not the word but the the tension of being that high up and it being freezing cold in a storm and trying to figure out what to do it really tests your mind too of what kind of solutions would you come up with? What what would you try to survive, right? And uh, I'm really not going to give you any more than that. Uh, all I can tell you is this movie will have you squeezing your hands, right? You're 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 anticipating what's going to happen and how do they how do they get out of it? It's uh it's really intense. And so well done. And and again, the key to all this, this this is the problem I have with a lot of the later movies, is you just don't care about the characters. And they spend enough time in a situation where really you wouldn't care, right? But being it's just the three characters and a lot of dialogue and, you know, the best friend scenario, the girlfriend scenario, this really works. And uh, there's really not much of a, more of a cast. There's, what, seven people maybe in the cast of this movie not much so uh i i kind of have to hand it to this one uh i need to go back and revisit a lot of the adam green stuff but there's something about this one that i just think possibly is his best work i don't know i haven't seen anything recently but uh this one has always stood out to me and i was really blown away when when the uh animated one came out and i thought wow this could really be a a mix-up being that they are exactly the same name but uh you know i guess that's just uh you know you're always going to have titles that are close to the same that's that's how we end up with Smokey and the bandit part three uh, <laughs> but uh I, I can't say it enough about this flick this this is a solid flick um why is it classified as horror i'm not exactly sure it's more of a suspense to me but there is some some grueling things that happen here and like i said you you are on the edge of your seat through the majority of this film so excellent movie to revisit and there and there's you know the thing about it now which i mean we we had 
we had cell phones and stuff at this point too and it's like man if if somebody just had a cell phone <laughs> you know this could have all been solved but uh I, I don't know if that was just part of the 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 idea of this it doesn't really say it was supposed to be an earlier time before cell phones or nothing like that but i know sometimes he does disclaimers on things like that as far as you know a time period where you don't have that access but um this one just really works and again it really makes you think about you know what would you be willing to do right cuz your humility goes out the window your your humbleness goes out the window you, you know you you start getting uh, it's the same chaos that happens in any of your zombie flicks or stuff. Anytime that you're facing the adversary and you start playing the blame game, you're, you know, all these things start happening. And uh, I don't know, it's really intense. Not only are you dealing with life and death of how you're going to get down, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet from the a hanging wire in the freezing cold below zero weather, with minimal, you know, you just got your ski jackets and stuff on. And, you know, you start getting snappy with each other and start blaming each other. I don't know. It's it's really, really intense on many levels. Uh, highly recommend this one. You need to check it out. It is on Tubi, like the majority of these that I like talking about. And I give this a four out of five. I think this is a real solid flick. I was afraid to revisit it because I remember liking it when it came out. And, uh, wow, I think it, I think it really holds up. I was just as intensified watching this one as, as before. So, uh, I don't think you can really go wrong with this one. It's a very, very solid flick. So, if you are a fan of this movie, if you really like it, uh, please let me know because I, I, I just wonder where this one kind of sits because I can see where it belongs in the horror category, but it's not legit horror. I mean, th this is something that I think the majority of this you could even see on regular TV and, 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 and still come away with, with, you know, the same kind of feelings that you would, even if it was edited, you know, some of the, some of the things that happen in it. But for the most part, it, it, it's great. And um, so, yeah, if you're a fan or if you've never seen it, check this one out and let me know what you think about it. And uh, I just feel like it really holds up and just kind of want to share that one with you. So, uh, also, if you've got ideas of other films you want me to kind of review for you, a, a listener's request, get them to me. I'll be glad to do them. If you know of some other movies that are kind of like this, that kind of give you the same kind of ride, uh, let me know. I'd be glad to cover those. I, I like the suspense movies, and uh, this one just really, really works for me. So uh, that's it for this one, folks. So hopefully we will see you next time. Check back with, uh, you know, like I said, other movie requests and stuff, and we will check you later. <laughs>